Hey everybody, what's up? Startup Survival here, and I'm in the woods for a stealth camp right now. I'm going to show you guys what I brought in my backpack. Um, this is a 75 liter bag. Um, it's a little big. I think I packed a little too much stuff, um, but it's probably weighing around 35 pounds or something like that. Uh, pretty comfortable to carry overall, just kind of a little on the large side. So anyways, it's from Mountain Equipment Co-op. Good bag overall. I love the color of it. Uh, the fabric's a little thin, uh, but so far it's holding up pretty good. So I'll show you guys what I have inside, okay? Um, in this top part here, I've got my fire kit. There's a little bit of tinder in here, um, a few ignition sources, some matches, some uh, fire steel and a lighter. Um, so that's a pretty essential piece of gear that I tend to bring with me. Here is a book. Uh, best dog walks of Vancouver Island. I bought this for my wife on the ferry as like a birthday gift. So norm normally I wouldn't have that with me, but uh, it's here today. I've got this little container here full of sunscreen because I've got uh, pretty sensitive skin and uh, I get sunburn really easily and I didn't want to bring the whole bottle so I just jammed it in this Tupperware. Uh, I got a little bag here full of almonds and um, walnuts. It's nice to have some fats on the, uh, on the trail. You don't have to cook them obviously. Um, I got a flashlight here. This is the uh, Phoenix uh, UC35 multi-mode flashlight. Um, it's it's pretty awesome, actually. I'll I'll probably show this later on when it gets dark, or perhaps not because uh, we're stealth camping. So, anyways, uh, amazing high power flashlight with uh, some low modes as well. Definitely need to have a good flashlight when you're going camping. This is a uh, a little toque here, and um, it's kind of like a skull cap here. I'll put it on. It's like, uh, what do you call these things? A do-rag or a skull cap or something like that. But uh, it's a pretty A beanie? Mm -hmm. Is it a beanie? Yeah, kind of like a beanie, I guess. Super thin, made of polyester. I, I really like to wear that when I'm biking, actually, because I put it underneath my helmet. It keeps my head warm if it's like cold weather. I've got another hat in here somewhere, but that's sort of like a starting point. So now I'm gonna unhook the main straps here. Um, there's a pouch back here, which is uh, very convenient for things you need to get often. Uh, I put my analogy and I got one liter of water here. We're not that far from a water source, honestly. So I think that'll be enough for a while. Um, in here I got a Gore-Tex uh, jacket. It's the Marmot Minimalist. So this is my um, wind barrier, rain barrier, if anything should happen. But I also don't think I'm going to need this tonight. Anyways, I think that... Oh, no, here we go. And I got a pair of uh, gloves here. Because I wasn't sure if we were going to make a fire or not. So I brought some uh, mechanics. Uh, these are like a light duty, they're fast fit model, but uh, I find they're good for doing a little bit of light duty work. That's it for that pocket. There's also um, pockets on the side of this bag as well. Um, it's very nice for organizational purposes to have lots of pockets, but I find that it kind of takes away from the overall uh, volume of the pack. These are, um, this is just a stuff sack with some uh, plastic stakes in it, because I'm going to use a tarp shelter tonight and I want to have lots of uh, lightweight stakes. They say plastic stakes are just as good as anything else as metal, like uh, they're lightweight, uh, they don't break that easily or whatever, so we'll see. And you know what, I got the SE6 in here as well. So this is my kind of go-to fixed blade. I wasn't sure if we were going to make a fire again, but uh, this could definitely get the job done if we did want to make a fire. And it's also my defense against bears. Not that there is any bears here. That's the other thing too. You're not going to see any bear spray in here because we're on an island where I think there's pretty much zero chance of us encountering a bear. But uh, if, if we do, I guess I can try to stab him in the head with that, you know? Okay, now we're getting into the sleeping system a little bit. My sleeping system, I didn't bring a tent this time, uh, but I brought many of the same sort of things I normally do. This is an inflatable uh, backpacking pillow. Um, I kind of wish I had two of these actually. I think it would be... Uh, pretty comfy for the volume of space it takes up. But anyways, I, you need to have a pillow. You can, you can make a second pillow out of some like spare clothes and a stuff sack or whatever, but uh, I think it's nice to have a dedicated one. This is my tarp right here. Um, maybe I'll take it out and show it to you guys now, uh, just briefly. But this is a very lightweight nylon tarp, and I brought a bunch of different lengths of paracord. It will help me put it up. And then this is the tarp right here and it's super thin super light it folds up it's got some loops here to put stakes through some other uh, uh, grommets I think it might also have as well but uh, the brand is the uh, Chinook Technical Outdoors and I think it's 8x8 and uh, it's a great color for, for doing stealth camping or anything else like that where you want like a lower profile kind of thing so you're gonna notice a theme with like most of the colors and stuff that I brought that it's all like pretty low profile I learned from my first uh, stealth camping experience that uh, Having brightly colored things doesn't really help your stealthiness. I think that's that's it for that pocket. 
in the bottom here, there's another compartment. And I wasn't sure what to put down here. Um, I didn't think it was good to put anything heavy. Something uh, light that can be compressed like this uh, five degree Celsius down bag. Um, it's, the, it's also from Mountain Equipment Co-op. It's called the Gosling. And uh, this is an older bag. It's been very well used. But uh, it's only supposed to go down to plus 17 Celsius tonight or maybe like uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think this should be plenty good for tonight. Uh, that is it for that compartment. The, re the rest of the stuff is in the uh, sort of macro compartment that's in the middle here. And I will show you, okay, this is like a bag full of uh, miscellaneous stuff I'll get into right now, I guess. Mm. You have to come closer then to see all the small detail. Yeah, you know what, I'll get into this in a second actually. Yeah. And what else do we got here? Okay. So this is my EDC kit. I bring this with me even in urban situations. Uh, maybe I'll make an update video for it because I put a bit more stuff in there, but there's like some medicines and toilet paper and you know some uh, cutlery and things like that. Uh, but I, it's a transferable system from bag to bag to bag. It'll go in a pannier for, uh, for a bike, it'll go in my EDC bag, or it'll go inside my backpacking bag. It comes with me everywhere I go. Uh, this here, I've shown it on video before, but it's a aluminum pot. Maybe I'll come closer and just show you. So this is an aluminum pot. Inside I have a fuel canister and I also have a stove. It's the MSR Pocket Rocket. It's all in here. And I got some forks and knives sticking out. I got um, a dish, um, what do you call that? Dish sponge. sponge. Dish sponge, sponge, dish detergent, all that stuff. So it's a self-contained system again. I really like having systems that I can just pull in and out of uh, whatever it is I'm doing. So this is my cooking situation for tonight. Wish, wish me luck with that. And what else do we got in here? This is the Thermarest sleeping pad, which I guess I'll take out now as well and show you quickly. Oh look, I didn't compress it actually, but uh, mm. yeah, this is a inflatable sleeping pad. I only brought one sleeping pad this time, and instead of bringing that foam stuff, I really like this one the best. As long as you have some sort of a barrier between this and, and the ground, I think it's pretty safe to use. Uh, so I've used this many times, very comfortable. Uh, this is my special uh, plastic bag system uh, where I put all my laundry in. I brought mostly insulative stuff. Maybe I should show the clothes too, eh? Like, it's worth, uh, worth checking out. So I don't know why I chose a plastic bag. I should get like a stuff sack or something. This is my like ghetto version. Um, so this is my insulative layer for tonight. I was gonna bring like a fleece or something, but I, instead I went wool sweater. Um, I wasn't sure if it was gonna rain or not, but I think wool sweater is uh, probably a good way to go for this sort of temperature range. This is my shimog. This is gonna be my towel actually for tomorrow morning because it's nice and compact, but big enough you can kind of unfold it. If I get really cold, I could like put it around my head or something like that, you know? Um, so we'll see, it's a multi-purpose multi piece of gear for sure. This is a synthetic insulative base layer. So I could, what I would probably do later tonight is I'll take this thing off, got my t-shirt on underneath, uh, next to the skin. I'll put this over top of that and I'll put on the wool sweater on top of that if I, if I get like really cold. So I got like multiple layers. I'd say at most I've got like four or five layers for my torso and I've got probably two or three layers for my bottom here. So got a few pairs of underwear in here, but uh, I'm not gonna show you those. Uh, I got these uh, long underwear. This is like a lighter duty version. So I'm probably gonna start with this. And if I need to, I'm gonna upgrade to this like Stanfield's secondary long underwear. And what I'm gonna do is just wear my shorts over top of them. Uh, so I got my pockets and all that stuff, but I'm going to stay like insulated, you know? <laughs> so I don't like to wear pants. I like to wear shorts like whenever I can, you know? Yeah, the rest is just socks, underwear, and also here's my toque for tonight. I find that uh, having a toque for your head will go a long way to keeping you warm, especially if it starts to cool off later or whatever. So that is my clothes, and in fact, that is it for the pack. It is uh, completely empty now, so that's the uh, 35 pounds worth of stuff I brought. Um, Maybe I'll show you inside the, uh, the last bag, my organizational system. So I'll come. Yeah, I'll come to you and you can open it on the ground. Like okay, so I'm going to show you what's inside my uh, special sack here. Uh, I got this little thing um, my wife actually put together when I went to... Um, Victoria recently to look for a place and it's got a sleep mask 
two earplugs inside and it's uh, kind of easy to keep track of them all inside this little bag here. Hmm. So I don't know, I find I sleep so much better if I wear earplugs when I camp, but that's me. Uh, inside here I got a clean canteen uh, with some red wine in it for later. It's probably like 200, 200 milliliters, it's not a lot. I put a bandana in there so it doesn't smash around and it's uh, just like a plastic cup as well. These are my toiletries. I've got, what do I have in here? Toothpaste inside this like funky little pill container. Soap, shampoo, toothbrush, hairbrush. I got a whistle in here uh, with a compass and uh, some other stuff built into it. It's a good multi-use uh, item there. Uh, and Okay, now we're gonna get into my food. So, it's pretty pathetic, but I'll show you anyways. Uh, I got a Mr. Noodles here. I really like the way these ones taste, these um, vegetable ones, they're my favorite. And that thing's like 30 cents versus a disgusting mountain house, which costs like $12 or whatever. <laughs> oh look, I brought another whistle. There you mm. go. So there's another duplicate item there. Those Kogan's whistles, I think, are pretty high value overall. I haven't uh, hard used them, but uh, mm. so far so good. I got a couple of oatmeal here for the morning. I like to boil up some water in the morning, eat some oatmeal. Maybe we can go do, do that in the field or something, eh? Like just kind of book out of here and then go back to like the uh, open area. Got some chewing gum here, got a granola bar. A uh, little mini can of tuna. This one tastes like dill and lemon. It's pretty awesome. You don't need a can opener for it and uh, yeah, it's not too much to carry. I don't like to eat a big full can of tuna. I like to eat these little half ones that taste like something, you know? And uh, that is it. That's the whole uh, the whole thing. I'll show you what I got in my pockets as well. Well, some of what I got in my pockets. So I got my wallet here. George Costanza wallet, nice and thick. <laughs> I've got a uh, Victorinox Huntsman. I really don't like to carry Leathermans unless I have to. I find they're like unnecessarily heavy. Unless you know you're gonna need the pliers. I don't know, I prefer to go this way. Uh, my folder today, Bird Car Car 2. I really like this knife. I've talked about it so many times on video, but what I like the most about it is the thinness and, uh, ooh, I heard something crack back there. Um, yeah, great little EDC knife, uh, very, perfect for a trip like this and uh, it doesn't have the triad lock but you know such is life right mm. uh, what else am I carrying in here I got a got a lighter with me right in my pocket here uh, but I don't think we're gonna be lighting anything except our campfire stoves probably and uh, yeah that's about it that's it man excellent so, uh, maybe zoom out a bit with uh, all this stuff behind me so uh, yeah this is my full uh, disorganized loadout now so Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.